Hello, Chantal, and thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. Um, just for a, a bit of uh, context into what we're going to be speaking about today. We're going to be speaking about the move from an individual contributor on a product team to a manager of product manager or a product lead um, role. Before I go into the rambling, I'll just allow Chantal to introduce herself. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, thanks very much. And thanks for having me uh, here today. So yeah, I'm a lead product manager in the knowledge management team um, at Ubisoft. So yeah. we build a whole bunch of products that help our teams share knowledge, uh, find information, and also get learning um, through through different tools. So yeah, that's what I do. Uh, nice. Nice to have you on Savvy Within. So the goal of this conversation really is to provide some insights and um, understanding for people who work within product teams as either associate product managers or beginner product managers, even mid-level product managers, to provide us some insight into what it really involves into taking on a product lead role. You've had some experience, so it would be good to hear from you. So we'll just dive into the conversations with a couple of questions that people are curious about. And then I think that will do it for the conversation. So the first thing we'd like to know is really what is the product management role about? Who is a product manager and what do they do? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of people out there who have definitions about what product managers do. Yeah. My, uh, my, my most important uh, kind of understanding of the roles are two things. Firstly, that uh, they focus on clarity and making sure everyone has an understanding of what we're doing, where we're going and why we're doing the things we're doing, what we're building. And, um, and the second thing is to be focused on value. So making sure we're always working on the most valuable thing. Um, well, those things might seem a little bit um, theoretical. Uh, practically, what that means is working with, obviously, a multidisciplinary team um, to build yeah. a product. Uh, but our role is really about making sure there's a clear understanding and ensuring that we're working on the most valuable thing. Absolutely. Why are we having this conversation? Why might this transition be difficult for some people? Why is it that some people get into the product management um, field and it's difficult to move up or to become leaders or to even carry out those duties very well. Why is it a problem here? I mean, um, I mean, I think that there's there's several things here, right? That, I mean, I've, firstly, uh, you know, you, you need a bit of experience to get into into a role where you can manage other people because you you need to really know your craft and being able to to lead other people. So, firstly, you know, you need some time to get there, and also by definition, there's going to be fewer roles available. So sometimes it's simply a you know an availability um, issue that you you struggle to get into that next role. But in terms of Kind of accessing these roles, also the the product. I I originally thought that as a product manager, you know, because of the work that you naturally do in managing multidisciplinary teams and kind of understand how to manage group dynamics, how to motivate people, and all of these things, like you know, you're like, well, I'm a manager because I manage a team. So uh, even though it's a product team, right? So, so I have these notions. So when I go to becoming a manager, I should be really good at this, right? Because I'm yeah. doing this. <laughs> And that turns out that's that's not quite how it works. That's not the and, case. <laughs> and and you actually, you know, there, there's there's things you need to learn in terms of well, what does um, supporting other product managers mean? Like what you need to really think about, um, you know, giving them sufficient space to to solve their problems. Because as a product manager, you tend to go and want to jump into the detail, and you won't be able to do that anymore as a as a product uh, like a manager of product managers, basically. So. Like all these things, I think there, there's there's definitely uh, specific skills that come with managing product managers. Something I definitely mm -hmm. didn't appreciate before coming into the role, um, mm -hmm. and 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 definitely things you can also learn, uh, like while while you're in in this role, and things you can you know, learn by doing um, and through training that's available. Uh, but I think it's also something you can, to an extent, prepare for while you're working as an in, uh, as an individual contributor. Contributor. Ah, makes sense. So now let's get into the nitty gritty, the practical things. So what would you say are some specific practical things that a product manager does versus, you know, things that a product lead or a manager of product manager does? So what, what are those bucket of items that they do? Well, I think that, you know, from looking from far away, the 
the day to day might look might not look so different because you spend all your time in meetings, uh, meeting different people of different disciplines, and just trying to get clarity and making sure you're focusing on value. So really, you're just doing at a theoretical level very similar things, but um, where a product manager will be mainly interacting um, with their with their team, uh, with their uh, so like your your devs, your designers, your QA people, and just making sure that the the products kind of keep the product development cycle keeps going. That you're moving towards the right place and being in ceremonies and all this. It's a fairly regimented, I think, activity that you're in when you're as a product manager. But as a, as a manager of product managers, that that routine uh, tends to change quite significantly. I mean, unless you're an organization that's extremely structured, uh, it pro it's probably the case that you just end up in lots of meetings and you're having to manage uh, your own your own time quite um, in, in, in quite a, how do you say, like uh, you end up having to manage your time um, like yourself and uh, ensuring that uh, you, you you have enough time to, to do the actions uh, you need to do. So you, and that can, and so so what, what does that really mean? Um, I mean that's one making sure you're catching up with you with your with your team. So having one to ones, um, talking about performance, talking about their learning and development, talking about issues that they're facing, all of those things. Um, then there's um, an element in terms of thinking about the the product strategy at at a like larger level. Um, thinking competitors, meeting, like understanding where's the market going one year, two years from now, maybe more, depending on kind of what structure you're in, you know, you might be expected to think very long term, maybe not, maybe, you know, it's, it's decided at a level like higher above you and, and there's nothing you can do, but um, you, you're probably going to be thinking much longer term than your product managers will. will. Um, so, so there's an element of, you know, making sure you have that time to think strategically. And then the third thing, which I mean, for me, um, especially at the moment, takes quite a bit of time, which is in terms of just um, defining the ways of working, uh, negotiating with other teams, uh, thinking about uh, what kind of people are going to be on the different product teams, ensuring we have the right design uh, designers or the types of designers, the right developers. The, I mean, it's, it's that whole like just yeah, have, having the right teams in the right place, and uh, and ensuring yeah that that just the that the space um, that the product managers operate is is there, and that it's it's the right kind of space, and that they they can really focus on their activity and don't get don't have to um, kind of advocate to get a, a new a new person in their team that you take on that charge and make sure they have all the all the tools at their disposal. So. Um, so yeah, so and that I mean, depending on how how organized your organize or how structured your organization is, that might be managed already by someone else, or that uh, often falls within um, sort of lead product role because yeah, someone's got to make sure we have all the right people in the right places. So, so is there anything that you wish you knew before transitioning into a product lead role that? Now you think about you're like eh, yeah that could have saved me some time and, and emotional stress. <laughs> I mean, um, the thing I before I sorry when when I started working as a manager of product managers, I I kind of had this idea that this is going to be easy because as a product manager, you're already managing teams, right? You already you already know how to or you know organize their work you know how to motivate them you you know you've learned all these like great interpersonal skills like you're awesome you should be the best manager in the world like um and, uh, and i mean uh, i realized that wasn't quite the case uh what, um but i think it's it's good you know you you live and you learn um because there, there is there are other skills that actually come come with managing product managers and line managing someone looking after their development and also coaching someone in your discipline like in your product craft um not being able to to jump in and uh, do it yourself uh, like requires a whole bunch of other skills that you might not hone as much as 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 just a product manager so so i think i i wish i had kind of had a bit more humility going into this role and, and thought actually um you know i should i should uh, really focus on learning more about how to motivate people how to how to bring them along and it's something i've done since and i'm super grateful for for the training i've had since um but yeah i think uh i, I was i was quite naive coming into the role um and uh but it's also been a great journey right it's uh I, i've i've managed really great product managers and i was lucky enough to manage 
um, some more experienced product managers at the start. So actually it was um, a lot easier in that sense that I didn't have to help them understand what a product manager does. It was quite, quite straightforward. Um, and I think there, there's, there's a difference if you're managing more junior product managers where you're having to uh, being a, be a lot more present and being, having a much stronger vision about what you think product management is. Yeah, because the worst thing you would have is the product lead being confused, as confused as <laughs> oh, yeah. junior product managers themselves. Right? You're the one they need to seek clarity about vision, direction, decisions from. So while there's the place of uh, you know enabling them and driving them to come to their own conclusions themselves, you should also have enough information to be able to like call them to order or you know put them in the right direction if they seem to be going yeah. the other way. So yeah, I think that's quite significant. I think you're you're right there, and it's it's really about uh, having a really strong vision about what product management is, and um, you know, because because if you don't have that, if you don't really think about what the craft is and why we do certain things, if you've just gone through the motions because that's just how things work, unless your company has a strong idea about what product management is and puts those out and you know, most tech companies will have some level of that, but not everyone does. In my situation, we don't have uh, uh, like a, a rule of this is what a product management do- a product manager does. This is what they don't do. Like that doesn't exist. And you, you're having to, yeah, kind of make that clear and sure everyone understands. And because also that differs from company to company, right? Um, newcomer, people who come from other places might not understand. So yeah, being you have to be quite sure about what what you think product management is, and being able to explain mm-hmm. that really well. Mm-hmm. That's that's so true. That's so true. One thing that I also find very funny is that when, as a product manager, sometimes you get emotionally attached to the aspect of the product that you're managing or the problem that you are solving or managing. So you get emotionally attached because that's what you do on a daily basis. This problem has kind of become your baby, <laughs> right? And then so it's hard for you to like take a step back every once in a while. Especially maybe when you're working in an organization, of course, that has maybe multiple products managers or you you have different categories of customers or groups of users or different internal stakeholders. It's very difficult for you to detach from that problem that you you've defined, you've tested, that you know that is the best thing since sliced bread. It's very difficult for you to detach when things go south. So I, I think that a product meet also helps with helping you to say, wait, lean back a bit. Um, and they're able to also spot emotional attachments like, okay, this person is quite attached to this problem and they're not seeing the full picture let me help here you know conflicts arise even between product managers and then oh you're not prioritizing my stuff oh mine should take more of the time and things like that and then the product need also helps to like you said vision but then put everything in perspective and say you know even if you don't have your way right now it's not the end of the world you can still achieve the results that you want to achieve if things get delayed and things like that that is very crucial and essential because like that emotional attachment i can't even like i can't sometimes even you yourself have to think and say why am i this bothered by this thing when things go wrong but then you probably just need someone to talk to to say i really can't get myself out of this feeling can you help to just put things in perspective for me that's very crucial for it yeah i think i think that's very true and um i think also in the conversations that you have with with the, with your pms uh, it's about asking those questions like oh but why is that why would that be so bad and you know after asking from a quite quite a naive point of view you know you don't have to be like oh i know everything and i know i know i, I know this isn't as bad as as you think it is you know you just you know, you have to come a bit more like, okay, like, so, well, tell me more about this problem. What, what's the worst that can happen and all of this. And, and a lot of the times, yeah, they can, they can, they can kind of get themselves out of that um, kind of rut and out of the, the emotional attachment quite, quite easily themselves. But yeah, I think sometimes it just takes someone else to just have that conversation with and be like, Jesus this isn't so bad. And yeah, I mean, uh, no one's going to die if, uh, you know, this feature doesn't get released this month. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what might I be trading off? And this time around, I think I'm very curious about the seemingly great things 
about being a product manager that I might be trading off and may be difficult to let go of when you're transitioning to a product leadership role? Well, I, what are those things? I think mainly it's the, you know, the, the joy and satisfaction you feel when something gets shipped and, um, you know, feeling that you've had a real hand in making that happen. Um, I think, you know, already as a product manager, you're not a doer, uh, your, your, your team already does the job and they're, they're actually, you know, coding, designing, testing, and, and you're just orchestrating all that to happen. But of course you set, you feel a huge sense of pride when a big feature gets shipped, a customer comes back and is, you know, satisfied or, you know, you see user feedback and it's really good, you know, all that, all that pride, you know, I think that's what helps us also, you know, stay motivated every day because you, you know, you want to solve those problems and seeing those problems solved, you know, it just gives you so much satisfaction. Um, and that's definitely what you're giving up. And, um, you know, and, and, you know, you, you'll still feel a sort of removed sense of pride, you know, when your teams achieve that, but uh, you're, you're, you're not going to, you know, be able to point exactly what you did and that made that happen and a lot of the efforts and the work that you do is is much more longer term it's much more less obvious you know it's you get a sense that you know the the value you bring is good but it's not like hey i shipped this thing um, and um and you're having to be okay with you know not not having that immediate gratification that you might get when you're working specifically on a product um I mean, and I think yeah. also, you know, the, the other thing, and um, I feel like sometimes I th- I'd like to be honest about these things, but within product teams, um, we, we like to have a really good way of uh, communicating, speaking candidly, you know, having continuous uh, improvements around how we work, you know, using retrospectives to make, making sure that we have an open environment where people can just progress, be honest and just do good work, right? The yeah. more you kind of explore the, the world of middle management inside companies, you find that that's not always the case. And, um, you know, in some places, uh, you know, you, you might not have as much politics, but politics is definitely a big part of what you're going to have a lot more sure. of. And um, the kind of lovely world of product teams where everyone gets along and people share pizzas, you might not have as much of that in <laughs> into, into a role that where you're managing teams. Uh, I'm not saying you're not having that at all, yeah. but we just, uh, I think he, you're also having lots of difficult conversations and lots of negotiations and, and other things. And I, I think it's, it needs to be said, right? It, it is a reality that uh, you're going to have to confront. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> so I, I know that it might be quite easy if I am transitioning within my current role as a product manager into a product leadership role within the same organization. But you know that there are a couple of people that, you know, they are probably currently practicing as product managers and they see an opening within another organization for a product leadership role. And they're like, "Mm, yeah, I I, I like some of that for myself (laughs) in another organization. So would, what would you advise for someone who is vying for a product leadership role in another organization? Because in your organization, you can easily understand the power tosu and the politics that play. You can easily ask like, hey, can I be added to this meeting with this client? I just want to get be a fly on the wall to get some insight into what their problems are and how you guys are going to journey about solving that problem. You know, you can easily make those requests in your current organization. But if I see a role within another organization and I feel like I'm capable even though I have not really really held that title before how would you advise I, I that I go really about it question and I'd be really curious to see what uh, like recruitment professionals say about this in my personal opi- so uh, this is definitely my personal opinion and not based on data but I feel it is easier to move up in in a role within your organization than it is to do it outside because it's going to be really hard to um, to really explain that you have the skills uh, to be a leader or like to be a uh, to be managing other people if you haven't done it before in your current role. Uh, whereas in an or- within an organization, people are much more willing to give you a shot, uh, like and to um, you know to to allow you to just try something out because they they're invested in your development. They want you to stay. They you know they like, they've invested in you already. So um, you know they 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 would be more likely to promote someone who's got less experience but just to promote someone internal who already knows how things work and has already demonstrated really great things so i mean 
it's a very long shot trying to go from, say, you're a product manager to going to a lead product manager in a different organization. You might be lucky and maybe they're just looking for, I don't know, like someone who's not got that much experience. Um, however, I would say, you know, you might be also in a situation where there isn't really somewhere to go, you know, um, in some places, uh, you know, most tech job markets, you know, things move quite a lot and people move on to jobs, but that's not the case for everyone. And you might feel stuck because there isn't really anywhere for you to go, you know, like there's your boss and that's it. And if they don't go, like there's no way you can be promoted. Right. Um, and um, so that, that in that case, I would recommend looking for roles where, you know, you do get more responsibility and there is an opportunity to move up later on. Uh, and and to be very clear about that in the interview process and say, you know, this is my aspirations and will this be possible within that role? And in that case, I would also say, you know, looking for organizations where there's much uh, a much bigger population of product managers, right? Because you know there's going to be opportunities coming up all the time. If you're going into a small, you know, a smaller organization, that, that might be a lot harder to do or, um, in the short, short to medium term. Um, so, so, yeah, so kind of thinking strategically about what, yeah kind of organizations you apply for that can also really help you um and then i would say uh, end with an organization the other option that exists sorry i forgot to mention that is a uh, sort of secondment or opportunities to kind of act as um you know when someone i don't know it goes goes on parental leave or uh, you know or there's a gap in recruitment uh, there's often opportunities to act as a role and they might not assure you that you get get it afterwards, but it gives you the opportunity to also practice that role for a while. And yeah, those are opportunities to really look out for because it's 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 a real great you know step into into getting getting the role like permanently. Like I never really thought of that last point you made. Like you could easily ask within your organization, like, hey, this person is away for like three months or six months or whatever. Can I fill in, learn from them just before they leave and fill in while they are away? So at least that already gives, like, I'm not asking for a pay raise or anything. I just want to experience the role. Uh, and you get a free slot on your resume of that experience automatically without anything. I think that's really, really crucial. And a lot of people hardly do that. And <laughs> thinking about it, a lot of people don't really consider that, like, Again, organizations might also be really like, oh, no, don't worry, we just have a replacement in the time being. But I'm sure if you have those kind of conversations, yeah. you could really get something out yeah, of yeah. it. That's, that's so Absolutely. crucial. Absolutely. Yeah, that's so crucial. And that disclaimer is also important. You mentioned the disclaimer, like, stating the fact that, hey, I'm a, pro I'm a product manager or I'm a mid-level manager. I've not really acted in capacity of a director or whatever role. Uh, it's also important so that the expectations are better managed. But one thing I think also would help is, if you are going into another organization vying for a role or a level that you've not necessarily really, really acted in, because we all want to, we all try it, we all attempt it, you should probably come with a really strong industry experience, right? So if I'm within in like security or gaming or something, you should probably come with a really good industry background so that that is your ticket into say, a good industry and also maybe a really strong understanding of product management processes, right? Because there's the general theory of product management, what is the ideal, right? But I don't know how it works in your organization, but I understand this industry to a T and I can I know what the ideal product management processes are on a higher level in theory. Give me an opportunity to exhibit it because I can like um, I can ace it in this industry. Uh, yeah, so that I think that would so give you a leg up. And I definitely did not consider that in when when I said that earlier. I think this idea of yeah, industry experience could definitely give you that opportunity to go to a lead role even if you didn't have experience because because you know your stuff. Um yeah. Yeah, hopefully your industry's um, expertise should count for something and, you know, for that role. Oh, okay. So this was really enlightening. Uh, <laughs> a couple of things that I didn't really think about before having this conversation that I'm like, never really thought about that. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, uh, you, you know that the, the thing I've been umming and eyeing about over the last, um, uh, like, 
yeah, a few months is the idea of doing an MBA. And I think it's an interesting subject to bring here, right? Um, rather, I mean, yeah. I will probably buy myself a house. <laughs> let's discard that answer. Because the thing I'm, I'm really unsure about at the moment is this idea of, you know, going for an MBA and the role it would play in actually helping me, you know, progress in my career. And, you know, we've had discussions about this before. And, um, you know, because I do think it's something that would be really useful, especially when you get to a director level and the kind of, you know, the business knowledge that you acquire through that and the, um, you know, the networks that you gain through them. So, yeah, so I would definitely go with yeah, trying to get an expensive MBA from some kind of fancy university and being able to take some time out of work um, to do that. I think that, that will probably be my somewhat honest answer of what I would do. <laughs> Oh my god, you're so serious. I was thinking you're going to say, Oh, I'm just going to like leave France right now and go back to the UK and buy a house or do something. Wow, that's so inside. So you do an MBA. It, mm. if, it, dep it cool. depends how much, right? I, I'm not quite sure how much money I'm getting at this point, but in, in this dream scenario, but maybe you could do all of those things. But yeah, I think, uh, but I mean, I do think, you know, that's something that at the moment, I'm dreaming about, I'm considering, but it's also quite a prohibitive cost, right? And um, yeah, and it's related to our topic. So I thought, you know, it was, it was a pretty good answer. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's, that's, that's nice. That's so cool. Oh, we, we've come to the end of the episode. And once again, I would like to say thank you to Chantal for gracing our stage and honoring our invitation to share experience about uh, product leadership role and what it takes what the challenges are and what we should look forward to if we're trying to do that so i hope you had a nice time I, just like this I, really great. <laughs> and I think I, I thought about what we we're going to talk about before and i i, I just love the the thoughts that you, yeah you brought to this conversation and yeah you opened my mind to the topic equally so it was really great talking to well, you obviously. for those that don't know she's like chantal is also really big on knowledge management and that's not even something we even touched on today at all she's really big on knowledge management and she has loads of experience with product management so there's a lot that we could actually learn from you as time goes along so i'm definitely going to um, <laughs> anytime, anytime. see that we have another episode with you so thank you very much